Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Oh, 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 for fuck's sake. Why do we do this to ourselves? Let's hang out in the studio, he says. Marathon time loop movies. It'll be just like college. (coughs) Oh, shut up. Yesterday me said that. He's dumb. Today me regrets it. Pop quiz, hotshot. You drink too much and then spend 24 hours watching time loop movies. What do you do? Oh, excuse me. Oh. Well, come on, guys. We didn't finish them. We got one more left. It's the big one. We just got to get through it. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Wait, huh? Oh, oh, for fuck's sake. Why do we do this to ourselves? What? Record the episode? Ow. No, that's tonight. He's talking about the marathon. Yeah. How much did you drink, dude? I mean, how drunk are you? Wait, what? The marathon was two days ago. We recorded last night. No, no, the marathon was last night. We still got one more movie to go, though. It's all right. Okay. Ready for this? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Wait, what? Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, for For fuck's sake. sake. Why do we do do this this to ourselves? ourselves? Let's Let's hang hang out out in the studio, studio, he says. says, Marathon Marathon time loop movies. It'll be just like college. How did you know what I was going to say? I don't know. It must be deja vu. Wait, whoa, dude! Are you stuck in a time loop? A time loop? What's that? Your Your mom's mom's a time time loop. loop. Say what now? Oh! I get it! It's just like that one movie! Edge Edge of of Tomorrow! Tomorrow. Wow! Or that one Star Trek episode, uh... Cause cause and Effect! effect. Season Season 5, episode episode 18. 18. (laughs) Nice! Excellent! (laughs) So, what are we gonna say now? Yeah, Yeah, let's let's watch watch a movie, movie, guys. guys. Rise and shine, campers. Put on your booties, because it's cold outside. It's cold out there every day. That's right, woodchuck chuckers. It's Groundhog Day. Day. It's the Groundhog Day Parade to Punxsutawney. We've got everything here in this here parade. Hey, it's Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. Oh, and uh, Dennis Hopper. In speed. Oh, wow. Now we have Keanu Reeves in... Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, my God. And William Sadler. Die Hard 2. Oh, my God. Bruce Willis. Armageddon. Don't look now. Don't look now. It's Ken Hudson Campbell. To... Groundhog's Day! Parade down the streets of Punxsutawney with Dan, Tom, and Josh every Tuesday at the fire pit as they make their way down to the most timeless holiday of the season, Groundhog's Day! The winter may be long, but hey, they got you, babe. Do-do-do-do. Well, it's Groundhog's Day, again, bots and listeners, and boy, oh boy, have we got another good one in store for you tonight. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and after narrowly avoiding disaster by a falling rock, we're on to our final stop on the parade to Punxsutawney, and we're finally here, again. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them to this one, and to tell us more about what we're watching, and who we're watching, I'm going to send things over to Tom again. Thompson? Thank you, Josh. Boy, this all sounds familiar. Well, it's Groundhog's Day. Again. Again. Hmm. How did you know what I was going to say before I said it, Josh? I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and last week we saw Ken Hudson Campbell, say that ten times fast, go out like a true hero in 1999's 
Armageddon as a member of Bruce Willis's team of drillers turned astronauts, which is the most logical, smart way to do it. Tonight, though, we follow the good mama's boy to 1993's Groundhog Day, also starring Bill Murray and Andy McDowell. The parade to Punxsutawney has reached the town square, and the mayor is about ready to give a speech. And to give us a rundown of the film tonight, I send things over to Dan. Thank you, Tom. Well, it's Groundhog's Day. Again. Again. How does he do that? Anyways, I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and we are finally here at the end of our final journey of season one of The Fire Pit. An amazing milestone for us, your hosts, and for you, our bots and listeners. And we cap it off with a movie about a weatherman who finds himself inexplicably living the same day over and over again. That day? Why the most American of American holidays, Groundhog Day. The movie was released on February 12th, 1993, so we're approaching its anniversary. Uh, It's uh, 101 minutes long, so just a bit over 90 minutes. It had a budget of fourteen point six million to thirty million. I, I don't know. I did a hard time finding the actual number, but it had a box office number of seventy point nine million North American. So it was a success for sure. Um, it has a Rotten Tomato score of ninety six percent and an IMDb score of eight out of ten. It's uh, considered a classic, modern cinema, and uh, yeah, it's 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 quite the popular film to say the least. I mean, considering it's a film about well. Groundhog Day. Yeah, not surprisingly, since the film's release, the town of uh, Punxsutawney has become a major tourist attraction. And uh, Bill Murray, Harold Ramis, and even Stephen Toblowski have all been honorary grand marshals during the parade. Nice. So, not bad. Yeah. So uh, a little uh, a little bit about the movie. This movie's the first time he did it for Krypton. This movie is Michael Shannon's movie debut. So he actually has a, a role in the movie. Small, but he's in there. Doing it for Krypton. You know, I'm going to go ahead and ask it because I ask it every time. But uh, who does he play in this film? Zod. I don't know what he plays in any film other than He's Zod. Okay, Zod. where does he play? <sighs> he always answers like this. So where does he play Zod in this film? I don't know. <laughs> but he's Zod. And he's there. He had to be a kid, though. Is he one of the kids in this movie? No, no, no. Because I remember this. He's, he's, at the, he's near the end of the film. I'm not going to spoil where, but... Yeah, I, it caught me off guard, too, when I was doing a, a searches way in the back, like when I was trying to connect him to another one of the movies. Oh, my God, that is yes. him. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's like I was drawing a blank on where he was in the movie. Like, you know, Wait. I'm just going to go ahead and play it like this is the first time we ever recorded the episode. Just give it some uh, some authenticity to it, you know. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw it out there. Like I, I ask questions and be like, I haven't said this a million times before. You know, it's like you, you play uh, Grand Theft Auto enough times, you start actually following the rules and staying in your lane and watching the uh, headlights and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and do that tonight. Okay. Thank you, Josh, for your, once again, professional restraint. <laughs> do you know what he's talking about, Dan? Staying in lane? Not a clue. Just, I, no. He's been weird no, this we want, I don't know. He's been driving me nuts. Speed was weeks ago. Anyways. Another little uh, lovely bit here. Um, Phil, uh, the uh, character played by Bill Murray, originally written as a much younger man. This was changed for two reasons in the original script. One, all the appropriate actors they were considering for the role were all older. And two, it's more believable that an older man would be so jaded about life. So I don't know. Having, that's why it was having weird. been stuck inside 2020 for 50 years. Yeah. 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 After living our, after living a year long version of Groundhog Day. Speaking of uh, Phil's casting and casting of older men for the role, uh, the scriptwriter uh, Ruben considered Tom Hanks for the role, but Harold cast Murray instead because he felt Tom Hanks was too nice and can't play a convincing asshole, which I mean, it didn't hurt Tom Hanks. He actually won the Oscar for Philadelphia this, the the year this movie came out. So yeah, Tom Hanks, career did not suffer by not getting (laughs) this role. Um, Wow. (laughs) Believe it or not, uh, Bill Murray was actually, I think the third choice because actually after they decided to go against Tom Hanks, they actually offered the part to Michael Keaton, but he turned it down. Oh, that would have been good too. 
Yeah. That's an interesting. Yeah. They also, yeah. And then after Keaton turned it down, they also considered Bill Murray, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Kevin Klein for the part of Phil in the movie. So uh, Chevy Chase would have been an interesting choice. I don't think it would have been a good choice, but it would have been interesting. It, yeah. Honestly, I think out of all the people who didn't get the part for one reason or the other, if it wasn't Bill Murray, I think either Michael Keaton or Steve Martin would have been the better choice. Steve Martin could have done it, yeah. Mm, Steve Martin. I would have loved to see Michael Keaton. The only thing is, Michael Keaton was coming off, he was only a few years off Batman. Like, I don't think he'd even made Batman Returns at this point. Yeah, he had. Batman Returns is 1992. This is 1992. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah, he was fresh off the coattails of Batman. I would love to see, like, like dream casting, impossible casting. 2020, uh, 2021, Michael Keaton is... In Groundhog Day, as Phil in Groundhog Day, I think that would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, it would have. I mean, he's stretching the age limit in terms of character. Keaton's got a certain like sneer about him. That's. I think he could have done the role pretty good, though. Oh, I don't doubt he wouldn't have. I don't doubt that he wouldn't have. But I'm just thinking, I, I would love to see an older Keaton in that role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, during the uh, the winning, this is this this one was hilarious or great. I I found this yesterday on the internet and I had to share it. Okay. So in the movie, there's a, a bachelor auction that Bill Murray's character goes to be, does be a part of the winning bid for Phil Connors is $339 and 88 cents. An amount that kind of appears arbitrary, but here's where it gets cool. If the decimal is dropped 33,988 days works out to be precisely 93 years and 43 days minus a minute. From January 1st, 1900, not counting quote-unquote leap days, 93 years and 43 days ends on February 12th, 1993, the day Groundhog Day was released in theaters. Nice. Math. (laughs) Math. I don't understand it. So to me, it's sorcery. (laughs) That's amazing. Lovely sorcery. So is that supposed to be... I wonder uh, Because I've heard that uh, Harold Ramis said that uh, he directed this one, right? Yes, he's the no. He said that um, it's like ten, he spent ten thousand years in the time loop. And he kind of backtracked on that a little bit. Actually, uh, that's uh, something else I had written down. But um, actually, he he only spent about a uh, hundred years or ten years in the time loop. But he, he lived like a thousand days or something like that. Also, it was originally scripted that the explan- there would be an explanation for the time loop. It would be discovered that a curse had been put on Phil by an ex lover that he cheated on or jilted in some way. Um, this was left out because Remus and Ruman felt that no explanation made the movie more magical. I thought so too, yeah. And I don't care what the 10 years thing, I'm going with the, I think 100 years or 10,000 years is the best yeah. one. 10 years, just like, because in Palm Springs, the director came out and said he was stuck in there for 40 years. That seems substantial. Granted, 10 years is substantial, but I, I think that like the excessive amount of time makes it more interesting, you know? Right. One last bit of sad trivia. Bill Murray was going through a rather bitter divorce during the filming of this film, which coupled with arguments over Harold Ramis on what direction the film would take led to their friendship breaking down and falling apart. Um, They didn't actually reconcile until Ramis was pretty much on his deathbed. Um, This has inspired writers, and this is rumored to be the main story behind the new Ghostbusters film. The new Ghostbusters film is about rekindling relationships. And apparently in the movie... The rumored story of the movie is that Egon died before Venkman got a chance to make peace with him. So that's a rumor that is not confirmed. I know nothing of the new Ghostbusters mm. script. I just I was just reading this while I was looking up stuff for this movie. But sorry, guys, oh, that's I'm not I'm not getting broken up about that. It's just the fact that they delayed that movie again <laughs> to November. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Josh. It's okay. Be strong. Be strong. So, Tom, how about the metadata? Yeah, I'm anxious to hear that. All right. So, yes, let's get meta with this movie here. So what can we expect from this movie and what is this movie about? Well, really, when you get to the core of it, this is a solid comedy that survived an intensely troubled production. Everything about this film, I mean, they got a team cast of uh, comedy people to make this, but everything in the background, it's another one of those stories where the making of this movie could be a movie itself. Like Nigel said, Bill Murray was going through a lot of shit through this time, which made things 
just tumultuous for everyone. I mean, there were one or two cases where Murray was made to apologize to one or two people. Um, I think it was Michael Shannon he had to apologize to because Shannon thought he pissed him off. He'd have Tobolowski like carry pastries while he threw them to people. And, and Murray just was not in a good place through all of this, considering also it took almost three months to make this film. It started March 16th and concluded in June. It was one of the bitterest winters. It often went to like the negatives for some of these. Murray almost lost a foot doing that freaking like where he steps in the puddle and we had to wrap his feet and after every scene they'd have to basically hair dry it off. So this was not an easy movie to make. But it for the work that went into it, it was a labor of love. And it shows, considering it, it was it just seemed like a basic romance story, but it's in the Library of Congress. It was identified as historically, culturally, and aesthetically significant. And that just goes to show the quality of the people that went behind making the film. You had Harold Ramis, who, for a guy who plays straight man nerdy types, he is just solid in comedy. Uh, in the background, like writing and directing. If you just knew nothing about the film, see Harold Ramis, director of Caddyshack and National Lampoon's Vacation. Oh, well, he also wrote Ghostbusters. And and Meatballs and Stripes and Animal House. Yeah, man knows how to write comedy. But, yeah, he did. Although he did not really write this movie. He touched it up. Danny Rubin wrote this. This is a and one. Danny Rubin wrote the original story and the screenplay. Ramis found it, and he actually knew about Rubin through previous work, and he's like, I like your script. It's not funny enough. So they went back and forth. There's a whole... Hey, Tom, real quick, real quick, before you keep on that thought, would you do us a favor and explain the difference between an and and an ampersand in writing a script? I thought you'd never ask, Josh. So for those who are not... In the I know, totally know. I just want them to know. Actually, I had someone at work ask me that question today, too. So, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so if you ever look on, like, IMDb or anything else like that, sometimes you'll see written by, like, say, Danny Rubin and Harold Ramis. But sometimes you'll see one where it's, like, uh, a writer and there's an ampersand and another person. Like, what is the difference? Well, for those with an ampersand... I mean, they were part of the team that wrote it. They wrote it at the same time from start to finish. However, if there is an and in there, it means that someone wrote it and the other person came in and like either added to it, took away from it, modified it. They were not part of the original script. And sometimes it can be just little things, um, whether they're a script doctor or whatever, or it could be entire rewrites. For example, um, Armageddon had like five or six different writers and they were all ants. And each person probably came in and it's like they needed a romantic scene. So they brought in J.J. Abrams to write a romantic scene. Or they needed something funny. Like Steve Buscemi didn't have anything to do while they were on the asteroid. So someone wrote him having dementia, space dementia. That's that sort of thing. So in this one, Danny Rubin wrote the original story and the screenplay. But then Ramis came in, basically modified it to have more comedy and then Bill Murray brought Rubin in because Murray wanted to be more existential. And he also liked some of uh, Rubin's notes that he wrote to Ramis about um, his edits. A little bit of snark. He said, OK, I want you two actually working on this. So in the end, they did work on the final draft together. But because they were not part of the original team, it's and not ampersand. And obviously, looking at some of the scripts, uh, modifications, I think I prefer Ramus's because it does pop a little bit more than Rubens. But that's, again, that's Ramus. Ramus knows comedy, obviously. As do all the actors. Almost all of them are comic actors or just solid character actors. Bill Murray, I mean, he's, he perfected the art of snark. Caddyshack, Coming Attractions, a.k.a. Blue Shoes. SNL. He was just coming off of a couple shutters to his career. He had Quick Change, What About Bob, and Ghostbusters 2, but this was before he took a serious turn. So again, you got Bill Murray as your lead, Andy McDowell as the hotness. She plays Rita. 
just a solid actress. She's mostly done romantic leads up until this, until this point with Green Card and Object of Beauty and Hudson Hawk, uh, our, our Bruce Willis film, but just a good actress. Um, you know, uh, Tom? Yes? A Bruce Willis classic. Please get it right. You're right, Nigel, because, I mean, when you think Bruce Willis, you think Hudson Hawk. And only Hudson Hawk. <laughs> Ever Hudson Hawk. And just rounding out the cast, you had Chris Elliott, you have Rick Overton, you've got S- Stephen Tobolowski, bing! And you've got Brian Doyle Murphy, all just great background comic actors who have good character work. So despite the trouble behind the film, you're expecting a solid movie. And I love this movie so much. Even if you don't know about this film, just knowing what went into it and the people that made this, you know you're going to get mellow comedy. Nothing too outstanding, nothing too wild and crazy, just a good sit down and laugh. So that's what people who didn't know about this film could expect when they were going into it. So Josh, what did the movie have to contend with? To get those butts in those seats. Thank you, Thompson. That was a beautiful segue. But uh, this was actually a very interesting weekend, and Box Office Mojo doesn't have it ha- it's it's odd. Just it's odd the way it is. But this uh, opened on President's Day weekend in '93, uh, February 12th through the 15th is when it's got this one rated. So if you actually look at February 12th, there's like five movies on the list. So the information's kind of out there, but. Interestingly enough, in this weekend at the box office, out of the top five movies, one movie was not a new release. So Groundhog's Day opened at number one in the box office. It pulled in $14 million on its opening weekend. Um, Number two was a movie called Summersby. Number three was Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey. Every 90s kid knows that movie. And number four was uh, Aladdin the Disney animated film. And number five was loaded weapon one. And Aladdin was the only one that uh, was on uh, like it's shit. It was on its uh, 14th week of release. And it was still top five. Holy cow. It's still, it still kind of is. I mean, well, with the pandemic being what it is every month right now is a graveyard, but wasn't like, isn't February typically like a graveyard month for movies. Like you throw out, except for like a romantic movie here or there for Valentine's day. Typically. Well, in modern, like, and I would say probably past 20 years in the box office, um, February is those, sci- is kind of geared towards sci fi films that aren't worthy of the summer release. Like, that's when we get our G.I. Joe retaliations, our uh, Ready Player One. Um, hell, Batman v Superman, that was released in March, wasn't it? Yeah. But typically, they'll like, they'll reserve a lot of these uh, big name movies. They seem seemingly big name. But uh, the ones they don't have a lot of faith in. Um, and a lot of times they're sci-fi movies too, like uh, sci-fi or action type films that just... And when you watch them, you're like, okay, I understand why you didn't release this in the summer. So yeah, even in 91, February was kind of a... let's uh, That's our test market one. If it does well here, maybe the sequel will be a, a summer release. But uh, yeah, other interesting uh, movies that was uh, actually in the box office at this time, A Few Good Men which was actually in its 10th week of release. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, which was on its 13th week of release. And The Bodyguard, the Kevin Costner, Whitney Houston film, which was in its 12th week of release. I mean, that's just not even all of the uh, new films that was out. I mean, there's just a ton of new films, and most of them you've never heard of. Like Loaded Weapon 1, Homeward Bound, The Incredible Journey, Groundhog Day, those are the only movies that I can identify on a uh, at a, a glance. Like Summersby, never heard of that. Untamed Heart, The Vanishing, The Temp, The Cemetery Club. I never heard of those. No, you guys uh, might have. T- but. You saying those titles right now, today, is the first time I've ever heard of those films. Yeah, so definitely not a big weekend. But uh, Groundhog Day was a number one uh, for three weeks. It wasn't until February the weekend of February 26th that it actually uh, was displaced. Can you guys take a wild guess on the movie that displaced it? You're not going to be able to figure it out unless you just happen to be a Michael Douglas fan. Indecent Proposal? No, it can't be. Basic Instinct? Nope. Uh, Hold on. Michael Douglas. Oh, 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 uh, Romancing the Stone. No. That Uh, was like 86. Was that really? I was probably off on that. Yeah, that was in the 80s. Black Rain? 
Nope. Falling Down. Ah, damn it. I love that movie, too. And it only beat Groundhog Day in its third week of release by $1.1 million. But yeah, Falling Down displaced Groundhog Day um, on its uh, Groundhog Day's third week of release. I've never heard of that film. Really? That's the, You've never heard really? of Wow. Falling Down? No. That that's one's... the one where Michael Douglas plays a guy who's literally had enough gets out of his car and then oh, starts walking my home. Oh god, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh god. I, I was remember say, that. how have you not heard of that movie? Oh, I Reddit yeah. has the uh the the air quotes McDonald's scene. It's not McDonald's scene in like on R slash videos at least once a week. Yeah, okay, yeah, where he's like he's pissed off because they stop serving breakfast at like ten or something, so he goes in with a freaking shotgun. Yeah, that plays yeah. well nowadays. Yeah, no, it's an Uzi. Yeah, yeah. an Uzi. And and in 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 defense of his character, nothing pisses me off more than when McDonald's stops selling breakfast at ten thirty, and as soon as you get to the cash register, it's ten thirty two, and they're like, "We're switching to lunch now." No, no, no. So, I'm not saying I would. I'm not saying I would pull out an Uzi and McDonald's and shoot up the place if they didn't serve me my egg McMuffin. But I am sure as hell going to throw a fit. Okay? I think anybody would. You're justified in that. Yeah. Also, his other rant in that restaurant with the whole uh, they he just says, yeah, you know what? I changed my mind. Go ahead and give me the double cheeseburger or whatever. And they give him the burger and it's all flat and nasty looking. And he goes, this looks nothing like the picture. Yeah. We've been there too, Michael Douglas. We've been there too. That entire movie is just a collection of scenes like that. So, yeah, it's like, I would be surprised if you'd never heard of that. You know, I do. Well, Josh, that's a lot of um, a lot of stuff there about those other movies. Some solid movies to contend with. So, knowing that this film beat them all like that... What are you expecting to get out of this film that you've probably seen more than a couple? Yeah, dozen at least times, uh, very good. Uh, it, yeah, I've seen this movie at least every day for at least the last ten thousand years. So um, I love this movie. I can't s- state that enough. I have high expectations for tonight, only because, and I'm going to shout out my dad early tonight because my dad is absolutely in love with this movie. If this movie was a person, he would divorce my mom and marry it. <laughs> I'm only like 60% kidding on that. Mom, I love you. But uh, no, my dad absolutely loves time skip or time loop movies. Like seriously, he'll go out of his way to find time loop movies. Like he made me sit down and watch. Okay, he didn't make me. Like I, I kind of like them too. But he's like, you got to watch this one. It was 1201. It was like a made for TV movie. It's a time loop movie. I don't remember it being great, but I remember him loving it. Or... Uh, God, he wouldn't stop talking about it. I remember he just constantly talked. Oh, you got to watch 1201. I found 1201 at the VHS, at, you know, at the <laughs> rental place. Um, so it's like when Edge of Tomorrow came out, I took him to the theaters to watch it. I'm like, Dad, we're going. Let's go. We're going to go watch Edge of Tomorrow. It's a time loop movie. You're going to love it. I haven't seen it yet, but you're going to love it. <laughs> Did he like it? He loved it. Cool. <laughs> what a twist. I. <laughs> I recommended Palm Springs and he liked it. So uh, yeah, if it's a time loop movie, he's going to like it. So I know I watched this movie a lot as a kid because this was like my dad's go to. Um, I'm probably misremembering this, but he watched this all the time. It was like being in Groundhog Day. But uh, no, I, even as an adult rewatching this film, it's like I'll just get on a random whim and be like, I want to watch Groundhog Day today. And uh, yeah, I'll just watch it and I'll love it just as much as the first time I watched it. Just You see little details in this movie every time you watch it. So I'm looking forward to watching this again tonight. And uh, I know exactly what I'm getting out of it. But uh, Tom, didn't you at one point go to a Groundhog's Day marathon where they watched the movie for 24 hours straight? I want to know about that and your expectations for this film. Josh, I've done that twice. And if not for COVID... I probably would have been doing that this weekend or next weekend. So here in Columbus, Gateway Cinema, every Groundhog's Day weekend, they used to do it on Groundhog's Day itself, but, you know, they figured no one wants to, more people will come on a weekend than a weekday. They have the Groundhog Day Marathon, where starting from noon on Saturday to noon on Sunday, used to be midnight to midnight, they show... Groundhog Day, 24 hours in a row. Now, that's uh, the year I went was the 10th year anniversary. They only showed it 10 times. They gave a little more break between them. But the second time, it was 12 showings. 
with like a 10 minute break between so you could actually piss. The contest was you had to stay awake the whole time. You had to actually watch the movie. You couldn't be on your phone. You couldn't be on your laptop. You couldn't be napping or anything like that. And if you made it through, you get a year's worth of free movie tickets to the theater for any movie you want to see. Not a lot of people made it through, surprisingly enough. You'd think after, I don't know, hour five, hour seven, you'd, you'd, you'd hate it. No, I, I love this film so much. I have a certain, um, um, oh, what's that um, um, thing where you feel bad for your, when you're like a hostage and you feel empathy for your kidnappers? Stockholm. I have some deep Stockholm syndrome with this <laughs> film. I unironically love this. So, I mean, it's not only are you seeing the same film um, for 24 hours in a row, you're essentially seeing the same scenes each time. So I have, you joked about having seen this film 10,000 years. Josh, I literally have seen this film 10,000 years and it's just as good. Also, you do, you do form a certain, I, I, I know getting you guys to do it, not going to happen, but if you ever get a chance, I'm going to have to have you down when Gateway does it again, because the experience of seeing this film with a large group of sleep deprived, caffeine high, loopy, it's, it's amazing. You, you see things, you empathize with things. When he goes to break the pencil, you cry out, don't do it, Phil. What has the pencil done to you? And you weep, but then you, re you enjoy and relief when the next day the pencil is spared. That, and it, you just need to try it sometime. If anyone out there lives in a city that has a theater that does that, do it at least once to say you did it. I'm going to do it again when it comes up because it's such a solid film. It's funny. It's got a, it's got a moral to it. You do realize that both Andy McDowell and Bill Murray's characters are monsters. And really the hero of this story is pork chop the fat guy that he assaults on his way out on day five that man is the hero of the story those two monsters just need to just you know just they they're terrible human beings but dan what about you what are you thinking well uh, <laughs> we're gonna need an intimately personal story dan yes how has this movie touched your life well i used to wonder what it was like to live the same day every day forever and then 2020 happened and i kind of got my answer <laughs> because we're now in the 27th month of 2020 and um yeah no uh i really don't have uh, any personal stories about this movie i think my, my parents liked it but i mean they weren't obsessed with it like josh's parents and jo i don't have a, a story of watching it with a bunch of my friends or sleep deprived human beings and developing stockholm syndrome for this movie but i do watch it every year on Groundhog Day. I always watch this movie on February 2nd. So uh, this year I'm doing it a little early, obviously. Mm -hmm. But um, I always watch this movie on February 2nd, just like every year on Independence Day. I always watch Independence Day. Uh, every year for Christmas, I watch Die Hard. So, I mean, I got certain movies I like to watch on certain holidays. Um, and this is always, you know, I always watch this, obviously, on Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. um, what I like about this movie is you can watch it on Groundhog Day, but it's also a romantic movie. So it covers your Valentine's Day movie uh, box there, too. But I, I don't really have expectations for this movie because I've watched it a dozen thousand times. So I know I'm going to like it. I know I'm going to enjoy it. Um, but I've never watched it with a real critical eye. And so I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. And this is one of those movies. I love movies and I love television shows that um, emphasize or encourage repeat viewings because every time you watch it you notice something different i love movies and tv shows like that so even though this will be the 1000th time i've seen this film i know i'm going to see something in this movie or notice something in this movie i didn't notice on the last 999 tries mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep that's, that's the thing i love about movies like this is like every time you watch it you'll notice something different Yes, and you know, as often as we've seen this, it doesn't sound like anything could really surprise us about this film. It's um, so if anyone were to ask us anything in regards to it, like say a random test, 
we probably would ace it with flying colors. Wouldn't you agree? Well, you would if my test covered trivia about the movie. But since I already went over trivia about the movie, didn't ask you questions about it, I'm going to go off of what other people thought of this film. And believe it or not, some people hate it. So we're going to use the same format we always use. Uh, Tom and Josh are going to be competing in IMDb trivia. We're all praying like hell that Tom, that Josh doesn't disappoint us again and lose to Tom two times in a row. We'll see how I'm feeling this time. I went on a 137-day streak with letting Tom win at one time, but you probably don't remember that. That's the shortest one. I let him win once. I have no idea what you're talking about, Josh. Yeah, Tom had his own Groundhog Day a couple months back when he didn't win trivia for like a month in a row <laughs> or two months in a row. So, uh, standard format, uh, IMDb trivia. I mean, not trivia, reviews. Uh, I'm just going to read a line from the review and I want you to let me know if it's going to be a one or to one to ten stars. Now, quick question: Do we want to do it to where we can't pick the same one? Yes, you guys cannot pick the same number. I don't care if you price this right. So if someone says one, the other one can say two, or if someone says three, the other one can say two or four, or whatever. If price is right, I don't care. But no one picks the same thing. Well, see, yeah, it's like I, I was just waiting for somebody to do the thing where they get the first answer right and then they just pick the exact same answer as the re- the other person the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. There has to be a winner. I don't play the ties. We are not the Europeans. Apologies to all of our European viewers or listeners. All seven anyway. of you. Yeah, I, I doubt there's seven people in Europe listening to this. There might be one. Hi Mike. Anyway. <laughs> so, first one obviously goes to Josh because Tom is a loser. This has been established. It's canon. It is. It's canon. So here's the line. I like Bill Murray, but I could not stand this movie. As the synopsis states, it repeated Groundhog Day over and over and over again. Pass. Um, three out of ten. I'm going to have to say four and just the biggest middle finger to ever said this review. Ugh. Josh gets the point to one star review. Damn it. <laughs> I knew I should have went with two. Dang it, dang it, dang it. All right. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm lulling him into a false sense of security. It's not <laughs> like he's heard this test the quiz a hundred times and knows all the answers already. You say that all the time. All right, Tom. One line. Scrooged was better. Oh, you went with that one. <laughs> Scrooge was better. That doesn't sound... Se- I'm going to have to say seven. Six. <laughs> Josh is closest. It's a five-star review. <laughs> Damn it. Josh two, Tom nil. Okay, here we go. Perhaps this Josh, perhaps this film gets billed too heavily as one of the greatest comedies and rom-coms ever. But I neither found it to be all that funny nor charming on the romantic level either. Um, let's go four out of ten. God damn it, Josh! That was the one I was gonna go with. Uh, six out of ten. Ooh, Tom ties it up. That's a six-star review. Oh, oh thank nice. you, Josh, for taking my answer. Thank <laughs> you. It's like you knew what I was going to go with and was going to get it wrong. It always leads for an interesting evening when I pick four on that one. <laughs> Still have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I, Who is this, Tom or Josh? Tom. Me. Tom. I enjoyed the movie. It has some great life lessons. You should not focus on how it's done, but why it's done. I'm going to say eight. I'm going to go with nine. Damn it. And Josh takes a commanding lead because it's a nine-star review. (laughs) Damn it, damn it, damn it. All right. If this, Tom, unless you get this one right on the money, uh, Josh is going to win. This is question four, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. I enjoyed this film when I first saw it as a child. Bill Murray is great, and the idea of being stuck in the same day is a fun premise. I don't think there's any buts. Oh, it's Maiko, isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, say it one more time, please. I enjoyed this film when I first saw it as a child. Bill Murray is great, and the idea of being stuck in the same day is a fun premise. I'm going to go with, oh, 10 star. You son of a bitch. I got to go with a nine star then. Son of a... Well, Tom is technically closer, but it's a two star review. Really? Yeah, I always do this to you guys. I always throw you guys one that's like, it starts off as this, but then becomes that. This one is the opposite of last time I did trivia. This one started off as a good review, and then the rest of the the, par- the paragraph after that is just burying this film. Anyway. I figured in my yeah. back of my head, it's like there's a butt in there. 
So, Josh wins trivia. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah, well, I told you it makes it interesting. I yeah, Josh <laughs> wins. Tom's a loser. So, what was your uh, sixth question, though? Just throw it out there. Okay, what should be a winning formula with Ray misdirecting and Murray starring manages to turn it to one long drag. I think that would have been a three. I'm saying one. It's a five. Nice. I would have won. Would have won. <laughs> uh, either way, <laughs> put your little hand in mine. There ain't no hill or mountain we can climb. Tom, play the music. Babe, ba, 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 ba. Tom, play the music. I've got you, babe. Ba, 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 ba. I got Tom, you. Tom, play the music. Welcome back to another accumulating episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and weatherman, Tom. And judging by the weather pattern, you can expect clear skies, warm sunshine, and not a flake of snow for all the rest of winter. You can trust me on this one. I mean, when has the weatherman ever got it wrong and thank you all for not getting it wrong and braving the tundra to join us for our destination to this groundhog day parade to punkstatani groundhog day bing it's been a fun little romp through the snow and rain but we've made it through our first season of the fire pit and to cap it off we're going to be having an end of season q a session where we'll be talking about the state of the podcast and answering any questions that you might have for us. So feel free to lob any inquiries at us on our Discord or Facebook pages or toss it in an email. Descriptions and instructions on how to pick our brains will be coming at you at the end of this episode. And speaking of things that you've already heard a hundred times already, let's say we check in on the team to see how they're handling their own little Groundhog Day loop. Yeah, so every day at about 4.04 a.m. my day resets. And it's been going for like, what, years now? I I really don't know. I kind of stopped counting at day 1000 or something. So it is like that one movie. Palm Palm Springs. Springs. Yes. Okay, so... You're repeating the same day without consequences. What have you done? Have you done stuff to people? Mostly, yeah. Have you done stuff to us? Uh, to save you guys some embarrassment, I would rather not go into detail. But yes. Okay, so what happens next? Honestly, I've pretty much exhausted everything a single person can do. But lately, I've kind of been wanting to get other people out of their comfort zones. Okay, so what do you have in mind today? Who wants to help me rob a bank? Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a hell of a skyscraper to jump. How do we really know you're in a time loop and we're just not super predictable? It's fine, it's fine. You ask this question every day. Think of three things. Dan, don't open this. All right. Tom, you're thinking of the number 36. They're pink again. 26, 62, 43, 71. What's with the numbers? Shut up! It tracks. We're good. I'm still not convinced. I really think you guys are just screwing with me. Open the paper. All right. It's a dick. Well, I'm convinced. Yep, let's rob a bank, guys. That doesn't sound legal. Like, at all. I'm sure it'll be alright. But if you're feeling alright and want to let us know about it, Or if you have something you feel all right with selling folks and want to let them know about it, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. 
That's Curtain Call Entertainment, I-N-C, at gmail.com. Just put Fire Pit in the subject line, as well as the forecast of your email, whether it's for an ad, a question, a recommendation, or if you just want to talk about the weather. And give us a rundown of your rundown. And from there, we'll give it a thorough study, confirm the barometric readings, set it on a high jet stream to Tortuga, and never respond. Because, you know, that's how the weather works. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Well, and that's the top of the news hour. Time to send you back to your regularly scheduled programming already in progress. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck. And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. I guess that's so. We don't have a pot, but at least I'm sure... Of all the things we've got. Say what? I've got you, babe. Oh, damn it. Now, they filmed this in Punxsutawney, right? No, they did not. No, that's actually filmed in Illinois. This movie's terrible. Will you be checking out today, Mr. Collins? Chance departure today is 1%. I'm sure about that. I love how snuggled he is in bed. Like, there's not a wrinkle on the sheets. Like, he just didn't sleep at all that night. Well, he does seem like the kind of asshole that would call someone up and say, tuck me in, please. This is Doris. Her brother-in-law, Carl, owns this diner. She's worked here since she was 17. More than anything else in her life, she wants to see Paris before she dies. Oh, oh so we bang. How far are they from uh, Philadelphia? Pretty far, considering it's in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Take in consideration, because she said, there's no hot water today. He's relived this day for a thousand years, and every time he has had a cold shower, he has never had a hot shower. This is Debbie Kleiser, and fiance Fred. I know you. They're supposed to be getting married this afternoon, but Debbie is having second thoughts. What? Also, we banged. Also, I banged her. <laughs> we know all about killing an animal it causes an irreparable hole in the timeline. We haven't recovered yet from Harambe dying. Living shall forfeit fair renown, and doubly dying shall go down. We get it. You read a poem. I seriously want to know who tucked him in. And the fact that he doesn't move when he sleeps. What's wrong with you, Phil Connors? And that cop is dead! Yeah, I've always pointed that out. He killed the cop. <laughs> yes, because that cop did not dodge. Thing is, like, I was also thinking about, like, you know... The day resets, but his mind doesn't reset. So mm. he remembers everything. Like some of those suicides made him die rather painfully. <laughs> He'd remember that trauma. To, to the, or what if he did it so many times to the point where it's just like pain is nothing for him anymore. Like he's used to drowning. Mm-hmm. What if that's his kink now? Like, drown me, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to unlock some weird shit for a dude. Bill, he's been a waiter for three years since he left Penn State and had to get work. He likes the town, he paints toy soldiers, and he's gay. Also, I banged him. <laughs> how did he get everyone to pay attention? That's what to I him? always wondered. It's like, how epic must that the beginning part of that speech been? It was amazing. It, was, it would probably put President Whitmore's speech in Independence Day to shame. We only got the last two sentences. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, he actually spoke for a full hour. He did like everyone... a Teddy, Teddy Roosevelt. He spoke for an hour, got shot in the chest, got up, and continued to speak for another 90 minutes. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Uh, what, what would you have to go through to fall in love with somebody after knowing them two days? Especially given the first day you were a total dick. Giant penis. Well, that's Dan. You just have to draw a dick and then give it to him in a folded piece of paper. Well, I'm convinced. <laughs> hey, it's, it's General Zod. He's so tiny. That's Michael Shannon right there. Oh, my God. He did it for Krypton, and he found him. And he's going to do it for her tonight. 
All right, is he going to smooth out the comforter to where it's just perfect and she's not going to move all night? No, that's what the turn-in service is supposed to be for. He's got to call the maid for that. Does that include the hand job? Yes. This is Tom. We're working the coal mine for the coast of town. Banged. Huh? It's Alice. Came over here from Ireland when she was a baby. She lived in here most of her life. Banged twice. Huh? Nancy. She's a freaking sack. <laughs> you gotta think. <laughs> At what point did he start realizing that suicidal restart his day? So it's just like, oh, okay, so you want to drink to world peace? All right, hang on. Yeah, he just he fucked it up, turned around, walked out of the bar, and walked right in front of a bus, and then just boom. I love that the basic philosophy behind this movie is how long does it take for an irredeemable asshole to stop being an irredeemable asshole? Well, it's either 10 years, 100 years, or 1,000 years, depending on your interpretation of the film. Either way, it's a long time. Larry's the one person that he has not tried or ever wanted to try to bang in this whole town. Would you? No. Yes. No. Wait. Yeah, thanks for nothing, sending me to WrestleMania 11. This is what actually broke him out of the loop. He had to buy insurance from Ned. Something was different. No shit, Sherlock. You have morning wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I gotta pay $2,000 a month for insurance. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, good thing I sold that money off the truck. Oh wait, now I'm wanted for stealing that money off the truck. I killed the original piano player. Oh, God. And now, back to the episode. Now that Dan is eligible to record. I hate both of you so much. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that as my segue. <laughs> Tom, I think you got the summary. I do. So let me... Mute Bill this. Murray lives, over, lives the same day over and over and over again until he doesn't. The end. Okay, so that was the summary there. So final thoughts, team. What did you think of the movie? Okay, so summaries. I honestly don't know if I can do much better than that, Nigel. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Corey. Welcome. All right. So movie starts with Phil Connors, big shot weatherman in Pittsburgh, who has to cover the Groundhog Day Festival in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and he's not really too happy about it. This is about his fifth time. He's been doing it over and over again. And no one likes to do the same thing over and over again. In fact, he has major networks in, interested in him, which he likes to repeat over and over again to Larry and Rita, played by Andy McDowell. So they wind up going to Punxsutawney. Unfortunately, him and Rita and Larry wind up stuck in Punxsutawney due to a freak snowstorm. And then stuck there forever due to the whims of a capricious god. At first, Phil is like, huh? Then he's like, huh? And then he's all, ah. At a certain point, he's murdered, married, and banged pretty much everyone in town. But he just can't get with Andy McDowell, which is so tragic that he has to kill himself. Again and again and again. But that gets boring, so he decides, what the hell, I'm just going to be the best at everything. So he takes up ice sculpting, card throwing, Jeopardy episode watching, piano playing, which apparently is exactly the standards that Andy McDowell's character has in a person. And she says, sure, you're finally good enough for me. And so having won the most important woman in the universe, he gets to have a new day full of sweet vermouths on the rocks with a twist and live happily ever after until 2020, where he gets to relive the same day over and over again, but this time with the rest of the world, the end. How's that, Nigel? Not quite as good as yours, but I think... Uh, yeah, Nigel did it better. It's passable. Yeah, he, he, he usually does. I'll allow it's it. a C paper. So, Josh, what do you think of our final film of the season? And just one of the best films we've ever seen on this podcast. Hated it, because I can. No, I love this movie. What, I, I just feel dirty saying that. Groundhog's Day is awesome. My dad is uh, got great taste in movies most of the time, some of the time. 
he liked Transformers. But, um, Dad, I love you. But, uh... <laughs> I forget that it's usually it's like, oh, that was a good movie. And I'm like, Dad, that was a terrible movie. Like, you're just got to be a critic. And I'm like, is this what Tom feels like all the time? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yes. But uh, no, no, this movie's awesome. It's just it's great. And Tom, I hate you, but I love you for pointing out all the little stuff that you get after watching the movie for 24 hours straight twice. <laughs> um, I need to go to that now. I, I, I'm going to have to try to make time to go to that 24 hour viewing of Groundhog's Day just to do it. Seriously, listening to this movie with Tom on the line, you could tell that he's seen this movie so many times and I can, I can visualize the crowd getting involved in the movie. Oh my God. Yeah. Not, not to step on your toes real quick, but to confirm, yes, it's like a Rocky horror picture show. You know how they have like audience interactions. The audience does start to like, like hive mind coping mechanisms, reactions to things that happen. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to try to commit to doing this sometime in the far future because <coughs> it may not happen in 2022 either. <coughs> uh, let's be honest with ourselves i hope so i miss that marathon but uh no this this movie was just great i'm gonna have to watch it again soon just because this is that movie that's like you watch it and you're like why don't i watch this movie more i can't even say i saw this time. okay the one thing i did say this time that i will admit is what the fuck is up with his comforter <laughs> like for real does the man not move when he sleeps Phil, Con okay, this is the the only thing that I have to say about that is that's the only th way they could guarantee it would be like that every single time they shot the him waking up because you can't guarantee the folds in the blanket are going to be the same way every time. That's, that's it. That's the only reason. A, probably a pretty good technical explanation as to why his comforter always looks perfect mm -hmm. like that is because, yeah, you're right. If they weren't going to re use the same exact shot of him waking up throughout the whole movie and they're going to reshoot it a couple of times, there's no way you can make the folds of the blanket look exactly the same every single time. That would have to be it. So I will forgive the movie on that aspect. But in universe, what the fuck is wrong with that man? <laughs> See, I never noticed that until you pointed it out, Josh. It's like, oh my God, that's... That's an incredibly tucked in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Impossible. Somebody would have to have tucked him in. But I mean, when you think about like, that's the only way that it could be the exact same every time they shoot that makes sense. But at the same time in universe, what's your explanation? Phil Connors, do you just not move when you sleep? And yes, Tom, everybody in this movie is shallow, but honestly, I could forgive Andy McDowell. I can forgive her character, Rita, right? Yeah. As uh, I could forgive her character solely because she hated him yesterday and now he's expecting her to fall madly in love with him today. Mm -hmm. Like, he would have to be able to do all of those things and know her intimately to be able to do that. All I know is, like, what's February 3rd going to be like for them? You know? Like, oh, yeah, I just spent 10,000 years yesterday. Excuse me? That's a brand new sentence. <laughs> He knows everything about her. And it's like, um, how do you know about my great uncle who I yeah. told no one about? Well, you told me that one time I was drowning you because you didn't sleep with me the night before. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Look, it's a long story. You threw your shoes at me. You called me a pig. I Things were said. Mistakes were made. And one of us, I wanted to see what color your insides were. One of us, one of us did something they probably shouldn't have done, but it's okay. It's okay. I woke up the next day at six and everything was fine. And now I can tell my grandkids that I've seen your intestines wrapped around your throat. I think I want a restraining order now. God damn it. This day doesn't reset. Does it? Shit. <laughs> No. Now let me kill myself so I can just start to stay over again. Wait, no! Bang! But I will admit, I, I do love the fact they never explain why he's his day is repeating. Because, uh, like, movies like Edge of Tomorrow, it's completely necessary. Uh, movies like uh, 1201, it's completely necessary. Palm Springs doesn't really explain it. But I think that movie is just as close to a modern-day Groundhog's Day as we're going to get. I don't think it's going to have the, uh, what's the term I'm looking for? The um, classic level 
that this one has you know it's not going to be as uh remembered like i think people are gonna be like oh that was a good movie it's like groundhog's day but groundhog's day is just memorialized as being groundhog day and uh how many times have i said groundhog's day i, I feel bad now but uh no this movie is just i don't know I, just, I can't say much about it i may add more on later but um yeah I, I don't think i have anything else to it so tom tom mister i've seen this movie ten thousand times and still finding things I love about it each and every time. I think the wise man once said, don't worry about being a great film. Just be a film and history will do the rest. Who said that? You did 10 years from now. <laughs> and honestly, this film is a testimony to that. It, it was a film no one thought would make the impression it did. Harold Ramis just wanted to make a funny film. And... Today, this film, I mean, it got the BAFTA for Best Screenplay. It's in the National Film Registry. Every philosophy and religion from Christianity to existentialism all point to this film and say this. This film is what we're talking about. This film, much like Die Hard, it is now, there have been time loop films made before this. But this film, every other time loop film is now a Groundhog Day clone. It's Groundhog's Day in on a beach and everything else. And it's just, it's such a solid movie. It's just well-crafted, well-executed. I love this film and I appreciate it more and more. The meticulous attention to detail to get everything right, to make everything as perfect as possible. It's... Uh, it's so good. I I look forward to when the net, when Groundhog Day Marathon comes back in Columbus so I can do this again. I sit 24 hours and watch the same damn film. And get flapjacks this time. Because holy cow, I want flapjacks. It is never too early for flapjacks. But I don't even know what more I can say. It's just, if it wasn't one in the morning and I didn't actually have to wake up tomorrow, um, I'd probably turn it back on and watch again if you told me to watch again i would it's so good nigel i'm gonna ramble if you don't take over what about you how are you thinking about this this is the worst movie of all time (laughs) like i don't understand this this doesn't even begin to capture the majesty of transformers (laughs) in any way shape or form i don't know i don't know what's wrong no, no, come on, guys. I mean, let's be serious. This is like one of the best movies ever. This is, to me, a lot like Shawshank Redemption. Not because the movies are totally the same. No, it's because Shawshank's one of those movies that gets put on a pedestal, you know, and uh, people tell you it's the be- it's one of the best movies of all time. It's um, uh, one of the greatest ever. It's one of those films like you have to see this film. If you only see it at least once in your life, you've got to see this film. And you're almost afraid to watch those kind of movies because you don't think it's going to live up possibly to that hype that other people set for it. Um, but it does. And this movie's the same way. I, I can count on one hand on my people said, I've never seen Groundhog's Day. And you tell them, you've got to see this movie. You have to see it. Go out of your way to find it. In fact, I think it's streaming on Netflix or Hulu right now. So, you know, get a free trial. Watch the damn movie. This is one of those movies. It's on a pedestal, but it deserves to be on that pedestal. It's such a good film. There's just little bits of of directing nuance that's just uh, so good just little things happening in the background it's little um things said things not said the emotions conveyed in the film the setups yeah like setups like things you, yeah, you don't notice until the fourth time it's like oh that's gonna come around later yeah it's like you said when he's in the hospital with the old man and you notice the kid in the wheelchair with the broken leg but then later on it shows him catching a kid falling out of a tree and it was the same kid from earlier mm-hmm yeah, it's like, oh, okay. So we're in the exact same coat. Yeah. One thing I do like about this film, I agree with Josh, and I mentioned it in my trivia, is that the original script, the original story that Ruben wrote, actually had an explanation for why he was repeating the same day twice. It's because he cheated on some woman or jilted her in some way, and she put a curse on him. And at some point in time in the story, he was going to discover how to break the curse and he was going to work to try to break the curse and how to break the curse wasn't to get Andy McDowell to fall in love with him. It was to become a better person. He had to become a better person in order to break the curse. He couldn't go on the rest of his life being this cynical asshole where he was never going to get out of the day. I love that. They kept that vague. They didn't bother to explain it. It didn't need it. The movie doesn't need it. The movie does not, it, it doesn't detract from the story at all. The reason why you don't know why he's 
um, living the same day over and over and over again. He just is. And if you really want to think about it, everyone else in that town is living the same day over and over and over again, too. He's just the only one aware of it. And there, he doesn't even have a eureka moment in the movie. He doesn't have a moment where he wakes up and says, I know how to do this. I'll become a better person. It's just you watch the natural progression in the movie of him slowly coming to grips with turning his life around without any kind of a major self rev uh, uh, revelation he doesn't look at the camera and, and you know wink to the audience that this is what i'm doing now he just wakes up one of those mornings that he's been waking up for a uh, hundred years or a thousand years or whatever and decides i'm gonna be a genuinely better person mm-hmm. and starts to go about doing that mm-hmm. so, although I don't, oh go ahead nigel no i i'm I, like i said i'm i'm i, I can't really cover much more you guys have covered a lot of it too it's just this is such a great film it's just such a great film about like character development and just going from hating someone to loving someone in the span of a movie you know also something that occurs and occurred to me did you notice that as you know phil bill murray's character got better larry got worse as a person because the beginning, he seemed like, I mean, he was snarky but he would seem like a pretty okay character but as yeah towards you know, the very end he did seem kind of creepy especially dealing with nancy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just in general too it's just worse and worse and worse as he went so i think mary larry had been going through his own time loop because i know andy was supposed to go through a time loop at the end like the movie was supposed to end phil's out of the time loop but it turns out she's stuck in a time loop i guess that was one of the original endings they had penned down in the original script which i'm glad they did not go with yeah me too Right, Andy McDowell, Rita, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, the original, like, the original script was supposed to end with her, like, going through a time loop. Yeah, I, I think that would have been, yeah, that, that would feel like a cliffhanger. Yeah, it would be like, here we go again, waka waka. Like, her, her day that we're repeating is the day that uh, Phil is his last day? Yes. Like, he gets better, but now she's stuck in a time loop. Yeah, I'd have to say, I think I like the way Edge of Tomorrow does that one better. Like, it's not the next day, but it's implied. Like, you learn that the, uh, oh, God damn it, Mary Poppins, her uh, character went through a time loop, but you only learn about that later on in the movie. Right, yeah. Yeah. Spoilers, by the way. But real quick, I, I want to go back to a comment that Dan made a little bit earlier about Shawshank Redemption. Mm-hmm. So which movie, this one or Shawshank Redemption, do you think has less anal sex? <laughs> Tom, edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm okay. Where, where are you getting this from, Josh? Let's, no, 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 no. We don't need to know where he's getting this from. We don't. We don't need to know where this getting this. Just like the explanation of the curse in the movie, this doesn't need an explanation, and we are all the better for it. Okay, all right. Well, no. You see, we implied that he's had sex with everybody. Oh my God! Here we go. For fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this much as good of a story as this is, good of a movie it is, it is only in like it's enjoyable if you don't like question too much of it. Like the whole like she fell well, we did question too much of it. It's like she fell in love with a dude she knew for two days, and the first day she knew him, he was a total asshole. But now at the end, she's like, he's saying, let's live here, and she's okay with it. So I think honestly, that's easily hand waved because it's just the fact that he's lived so many possible um you know branches off of that single day that he knows exactly what to do to make her putty for him you know like uh okay like i played this game it's the same star wars game that i recently came back into playing and there was this one point where you could go into this one battle and as long as you retreated um, early, you could come into the battle and everything would be exactly the same. So you, I, I called it Groundhog Day thing. Like you get to these really, really hard battles. And if you, as long as you retreated before the end of the battle, when you went in, if you went back in with the exact same uh, like uh, squad, you could go into that fight and everything would happen exactly the same. And you would change one minor thing to see if that worked. If it didn't work, then you retreated and quit quit that one and then you'd keep going back and you'd keep trying it over and over and over and over and over again and eventually you would win the battle with you know perfect scenario like you you want to go in and you win the battle without anybody dying um you would eventually get to that point but you got to do it like a thousand times 
this was early on in the game and it was incredibly tedious. So I'm just, that, that's something else I'm going to get into. Um, it's Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. If you're anybody's curious, it's the Galactic War um, part, but uh, it used to be a lot more difficult than it is now. But the, uh, like, the similar in that to this, like, she, she was the Galactic War and they would constantly be going in and, um, <laughs> Going after it, and he's like, it wouldn't quite get it right, so he'd just, you know, restart, try again, tweak something a little bit different. And by the way, uh, early shout out to Tyrick Thorne. This is a spoiler to the question that he did ask on uh, Discord about our Q&A session. I've recently restarted playing the game again. I'm not as involved as I used to be, but I am, pl- I am playing the game again. Um, but it's basically you go back through and you keep trying at it until you get the perfect results and i think the final day was when he had the perfect results with her yeah but i mean but the next day when they they come out it's a new day i don't think he'd be as on board with you saying let's live here i think there'd be a little more like no no too fast phil but i don't know who knows that relationship may have ended on february 4th (laughs) How pissed off and sad would he be saying, I lived 10,000 years to get you, and now you're breaking up with me for Larry. You wanted to move to Punxsutawney. I'm worried. I'm focused on my career right now. (laughs) Like, you were an okay lay, but. (laughs) And just okay. Like, what do you mean? I've had sex with 100,000 people. Yeah, that's another one we need to discuss later. We're going to pin that conversation for a future date. 10,000 years of sex and you can't get any better than that, dude. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I think I just dodged a bullet. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, So we are terrible. But uh, I have to say, overall, great movie to cap off our first season. Yep, yep. Fun journey, actually. I don't want to toot my own horn because we went with my list, but this was a very fun journey. This was the perfect uh, palate cleanse from... uh, uh, the last couple journeys we went on. Not that they weren't good. It's just they were they were mm-hmm. pretty heavy. Yeah, just spoiler <laughs> yes. alert. Dan's probably not going to get any uh, lists picked next season, or maybe one, because he picked half of the f- lists this season. Seriously. I mean, he was the first list, if you want to get truly meta. He was the first list we ever went with, which was a solid list to start all of our journeys on. Let's not get ourselves. Yeah, this coming season, Nigel, I'm bringing my A game. I'm going to be the king of season two. Watch out now. I'm coming. Okay. For that well, crowd. now hold on a second. Now I, I should get a little bit of credit. We went with my list and Tom and Josh is the one with the goddamn algorithm. They're picking his fucking list for him, <laughs> which means technically he should be picking way better lists than me. And we would have gone with him 100% of the time. Well, after you went back to back with my lists and then we had to pick the Superman journey and we had three Westerns in that one. I still haven't forgiven you for that. <laughs> that was not my fault. You had a vote and you voted for me. Buyer's remorse. <laughs> don't, not don't, my responsibility. Don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Exactly. But now I'll see this. I mean, thematically speaking, almost all the movies on this list were fit the theme of repetition. I mean, we had speed, which was like die, die hard, hard on a bus. bus. We had Die Hard 2, which was Die Hard in an Airplane. We had Hoosiers, which more or less all... Die, almost all die, die Hard, hard in a Basketball. Die Hard in a Basketball Court. Wait, no, wait. Hold on. <laughs> but no, most sports movies base themselves on that film. We have Groundhog's Day, which almost... I mean... Die, die Hard in a Groundhog's Day, yep. Die Hard in a Groundhog's Day. So I think uh, thematically speaking, the films, they all they all fit. You know, you rhythm. guys forgot to mention Armageddon, which is the same movie Michael Bay's been making since 1996. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Die Hard on an Asteroid. <laughs> Deep Impact with a better soundtrack. <laughs> it's like, someone's like, well, Deep Impact had the more accurate science. Well, yeah, but it's also boring. <laughs> it's like, it did not have Aerosmith. Yeah, it didn't have Aerosmith. So it did have Kay Leone and Morgan Freeman. Yeah, but it did Robert have Duvall. A, but it didn't have a machine gun on a drilling John Favreau. armadillo. It didn't have a machine gun on a jilly, drilling armadillo. And it did not have Liv Tyler. Yeah. Or, or Ben Affleck. Did not have either of those. Yeah, see, so uh, right there, inferior. Did, uh, you know, I don't care much about Liv Tyler, but it didn't have Ben Affleck. See, inferior. I need to go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> Here we go again. 
Tom, edit that out. No, that's staying in, baby. Hang on, I need a I need a Larry moment. Oh God. Yeah, and for those of you listening, we pointed out like on four different occasions where Larry was rubbing one out in public. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. But I, uh, before we get back into that visual, which, so anywho, <laughs> thank you. Josh. That does it for tonight's show. As a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon's, or wherever fine podcasts are downloaded and listened to. So we do ask that you like and subscribe, and start some kind of a grassroots campaign so we can be the primary star of next year's uh twenty four hour Groundhog Day uh, marathon. We love every one of our listeners, but we're going to need a few more than the uh, dozen of you that do listen to our, le- our episode on a regular basis. You can spread the word by liking and subscribing on this podcast because it helps us out and it helps spread the word. So if you've already done that, thank you. We genuinely appreciate it. But if you've done that or if you haven't done that and want to, be sure to join us on Discord and have some fun interacting with us, talking amongst some of our fledgling and not fledgling, opposite of fledgling fans. You can suggest movie paths, give us some feedback. Also join us on Facebook and Twitter and help participate in our Q&A for our mid-season break. Provide questions, comments, comments about questions and questions about comments. And we would love to hear all of those. So join us there and join us. Yes. And if you want to reach out to us old school style, you can email us, mention back in the interspersal. If you want to talk sponsorship, feedback, submissions, even submit a question or two for the Q&A next week, you know, go ahead and, and send us out. Despite what uh, our interspersal host tells us, we're actually reading these things. We're just not replying to them. But anyways, just like I said, reach out, little, you know, tell us anything. Tell us you love us, you hate us, whatever. We want, we just, we want the feedback and the links to the email. All social media can be found on the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. And now that I'm editing those uh, episode descriptions, I can further guarantee that they will be on there. For those of you who don't know, for like uh, six months, we kept saying that they would be on there, and Tom kept not adding them. So Tom's no longer fully in charge. Yeah, so we were wondering why nobody was joining the Discord. So Tom is no longer in charge of finalizing the episode description. Thank you, Tom. In my defense, we do have the Discord link on the front page of our Podbean site. Yes, but people automatically download the episode description. Very few people probably actually go to firepit.podbean.com. Well, see what I did there? I I see what you did there. Very, very subtle plug there. Very nice. Very nice. So while you're plugging... We love you, Tom. We love you, Tom. But uh, we do give you way more responsibility than we should. I am the glue that holds this podcast together. I am the Senate. (laughs) All right, granddaddy, palpy palp. I'm grumpy because my last movie sucked. (laughs) Josh, you have any uh, shout outs? Well, I would uh, like to shout out, um, well, Tyrick Thorne for giving us some awesome answers and everybody else on our Discord who's been giving us some awesome questions. I'm sorry, not answers. Some awesome questions. I look forward to answering them on our Q&A section uh, in the coming weeks. My mom wasn't very happy with me shouting out my dad and ignoring her, even though I mentioned her. So I will shout out my mom. I love you, mom. And uh, my dad's there too. But uh, I'm shouting out my mom this time. So I always love it. She calls me up randomly and she's like, oh, so you shout out your dad. My mom is as sarcastic as you can imagine. And I love her. Thompson. Well, from my side, I want to shout out the Groundhog Day crew over here in Columbus. Those Star Wars soldiers who stuck with us through those marathons. Even Jackie, Des, Jillian, Nora, Jenny, Madison, Peter, Andrew, Tracy, Jason, Adam, Al, and of course, my first friend and best Columbus friend, Carissa. Thank you for introducing me to the 24-hour Groundhog Day Marathon. I'm sorry we couldn't do it this year. And if I miss anyone else in the crew, I, I'm i usually pretty dead tired while we're doing it. So you were there with us in spirit and in body. And I look forward to when we can do it again. I miss all of you. And I cannot wait for when things are properly opened up so we can all hang out again. Look, I hope... You're all listening to this episode at some point. Thank you for being there. 
And thank you for making me love this film as much as I am. And thank Josh and Dan, both of you, for making this the final film of our season. I could not think of a better note to end this on. Dan, we got a shout out. <laughs> yeah, woo! I got a shout out from those guys. I'm kind of, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm kind of a big deal. <laughs> they shouted me out on the Fire Pit podcast last week. So uh, you and me, drinks later? Sweet vermouth on the rocks with a twist. All right. Hello, come back, please. No, no, I, I'm just joking. <laughs> Seriously, scotch on the rocks. Sex on the beach? No, no, the drink, not the... Oh, jeez. Uh, this always happens. I really need to start suggesting blue Hawaiians. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I would like to give a shout out to Peggy, the old school... OG friend of the channel. Uh, she has been with us since episode one and we thank her immensely for that. She even helped out a little bit during the uh, whistle stop campaign trail to Washington. And that was awesome of her. So big shout out to her. Thanks for, you know, hanging with us the entire season. You know, your support's appreciated. Uh, same with Rob uh, from Rob's Custom PCs, but he's also a friend. And uh, he's also pretty much been with us since day one. And he loves the podcast and has been giving us some great feedback lately. Danielle, uh, another one that's been a longtime fan. She's also given us a lot of great feedback, asking some great questions for the Q&A next week. So we're, we're looking forward to answering those questions for you guys. Um, and just even if you're the only listeners we ever get, we appreciate the fact that you listen to our show every week and you tell us how much you like it or tell you, tell us how much you hate the movie we watched or whatever. We so appreciate that because you know, we are doing this for, for people like you that just want to listen to us ramble on about movies like we used to when we sat around Josh's fire pit back in the day. So thank you very much for listening. Yeah. If we get no more listeners, I will continue doing this for the next 10 years yeah. until mm -hmm. I get fed up with Tom. And then he uh, finally quits and goes and fulfills his lifelong dream of becoming a stripper. Uh, one of these days, the stage calls to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, seriously, thank everybody for following us and listening to us on our first season. It has been a wild ride. And I've got to say that we have absolutely enjoyed every single episode we have filmed this season, all 46 of them. And we look forward to another full season. We'll start that in the next few weeks after our mid-season break. Yeah. We got about three weeks coming where we're not going to be reviewing a movie. Um, uh, we got a Q&A episode coming, an introspective episode, and then we're going to be doing a selection section that hopefully doesn't get deleted this time. We know it won't be as perfect as the last selection episode, but honestly, nothing will ever be No, as that was definitely that. the best episode we've ever produced i know it was and too good i mean the internet couldn't handle it exactly i mean when you get a shout out from both george lucas and steven spielberg in the same episode that's just how are you going to talk oh and that? then when patrick stewart chimed in and he gave that seven minute monologue yeah of oh just talking about everything oh man i cried yeah it was, but it was so good yes yes it was it was amazing and we are heartbroken and devastated we never got to share it with any of you so we're going to try to make the next selection episode um, in uh, two, in a couple of weeks just as great, if not better. Probably not better because that one was perfect, but we'll do our best. But thank you. Just please tune in the next couple of weeks. I know we're not going to be reviewing a movie, but we're going to be coming up with some pretty good episodes. And uh, then we're going to reveal our next destination in a couple of weeks. And um, I think you guys are going to like where we're going back to. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely our uh, sequel season to, to uh, our first one is going to be awesome. So yeah, our sophomore episode so, or sophomore season, so to speak. So we're looking forward to it. We hope you guys are looking forward to it. But yeah, so get those questions in. You got about another week before we start getting those episodes uh, figured out. Until then, you know, I've been Josh. I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. <laughs>
Josh. Oh my God, it's a new day. Oh my God. Oh my God, I did it. it we recorded the perfect episode or something. I, I don't know. It's the next day. Oh my God. It's the next day, guys. Oh my God. Oh my God, I killed so many people yesterday. <laughs>